Hey guys, this is the second video from a series about the ammonia industry. In the last video, we talked very briefly about the ammonia synthesis reaction, just to give you an idea about what we'll be trying to achieve throughout the whole process. So, before I get into any details about specific sections in the production process, I would like to first give you an overview about the process through this very simplified diagram. There is only one section that is not included here in this diagram, which is the desulfurization step, where sulfur is removed from the process gas stream, but we'll get into the details of that later in future videos. So now, this stream called feed is the desulfurized process gas. And at this point, steam is added to the stream upstream the primary reformer, that thing in the, in the red color. And of course, the addition of steam is according to a steam carbon ratio. And the details of that ratio, we're going to get into it in, in later videos. So when you, uh, when you look at the blocks here mentioning the temperatures and the pressures, like, like these blocks, I don't want you to stick to the values because they're not that accurate. But throughout the presentation, I'll try to mention the operating values that we actually operate at where I work. What happens in the primary former is that natural gas hydrocarbon components react with steam where hydrogen CO and CO2 are produced so for example CH4 reacts with H2O to produce uh, to produce hydrogen CO and CO2 and I would highly recommend that throughout the process try to write down the, the reactions as we move on from different sections the reforming reaction is endothermic so heat is supplied through burners in a furnace box where the burners surround the tubes in which the required catalyst is loaded and the reaction takes place. After the hydrocarbon components have been reformed in the primary reformer, the process gas stream inlet the secondary reformer, inlet the secondary reformer still contains around 13% methane that will be further reformed in the second reformer. This 13% methane haven't actually been reformed in the primary reforming section. So, remember when we mentioned that we need both hydrogen and nitrogen for the ammonia synthesis reaction? The role of the secondary reformer is both introducing nitrogen to the process gas stream where air is compressed in a compressor and that air is sent to the secondary reformer. And the second role of the secondary reforming is to further reform the 13% methane that were not reformed in the primary reforming section. So it has a it has a dual role. Okay. So the first reaction that takes place when gas meets the air in the second reformer is the auto ignition combustion reaction, where part of the hydrogen produced in the primary reformer reacts with the oxygen in air in the second reformer to produce steam. And a huge amount of heat. The second reaction is that steam further reforms the methane present in the process gas stream and the methane slip outlet the second reformer is around 0.4 mole percent. Throughout the presentation I want you to always track the changes in the process gas streams composition to get a good grasp of what's taking place throughout the whole process. So now the process gas exits the second reformer at 980 degrees Celsius and a pressure around 35 bar. That pressure actually depends on the technology used. So this stream is mainly made up of, of hydrogen, nitrogen, CO, CO2, and steam. Unfortunately, there is no such process that could be used for CO removal or carbon monoxide removal. So we'll have to convert carbon monoxide to carbon dioxide, which will be absorbed in the CO2 removal unit. Before entering the high temperature shift converter, which is the first reactor where the CO is shifted to CO2, the process gas high energy content is used to generate and superheat steam. And both the steam generator and the uh, steam superheater are, are resembled by this exchanger upstream the high temperature shift reactor. So the gas enters that heat exchanger and is accordingly cooled to around 360 degrees Celsius, which is the temperature inlet the high temperature shift reactor. 
The gas enters the HTS where carbon monoxide in the gas stream where carbon monoxide in the gas stream reacts with H2O steam and produces CO2 and hydrogen. The reaction is exothermic and is accompanied by an increase in process gas temperature. As the conversion to CO2 increases and the temperature increases, the rate of the shift reaction decreases as the reaction approaches equilibrium, as you all know. So accordingly, the gas is cooled to 200 degrees Celsius and steam is generated in the same heat exchanger. The gas enters the LTS, low temperature shift, and it is so cold because it operates at a lower temperature than the HTS. The same shift reaction takes place where carbon monoxide reacts with steam and generates CO2 and hydrogen, where almost all of the carbon monoxide present in the process gas stream is shifted to carbon dioxide. And the gas outlet, the LTS, and the gas outlet, the LTS, contains about 0.3 mole percent carbon monoxide. Now the gas outlet, the LTS, is mainly hydrogen, nitrogen, CO2, and H2O, with traces of argon from air and CO slip from the shift conversion section. The gas is then cooled to allow for all the H2O present to condense and separate upstream the CO2 absorber. So the next step is to absorb CO2 present in the process gas stream. This is done in the CO2 removal section. As you can see, there is an absorber and desorber. This is, this is the CO2 removal section, both the CO2 absorber and the CO2 stripper. Okay, how is CO2 absorbed from the gas? This is done in the CO2 removal section where a solution selected for CO2, the solution mainly consists of 30% potassium carbonate and an activator. And we'll also get into the details of that CO2 removal section in, in later videos. So, that solution, which is selected for CO2, is utilized in an absorption column, where it absorbs the CO2 in the gas, and that solution is stripped of CO2 in a stripping column, so that solution could be used in a recirculating manner to allow for continuously removing CO2 from the gas stream. The gas outlet, the absorber, of course, this, this CO2 is generated in the, C, in the CO2 stripper, where the solution is regenerated so that it could be used again in the absorption column and so on. So the gas outlet, the absorber, the gas, yeah, the gas ex exits the absorber from the top. The gas outlet, the absorber is mainly hydrogen, nitrogen with 0.1 mole percent CO2, 0.3 mole percent CO and traces of argon. Since any oxygen compounds are very harmful for ammonia synthesis catalysts, CO and CO2 present in the process gas must either be either be removed or converted to another compound that is considered inert to the synthesis reaction catalyst and has no has no effect on the it's is is inert for the reaction has no effect on the catalyst okay this is where the methanation process is utilized where traces of CO and CO2 present in the gas stream outlet the absorber react with hydrogen in the process gas stream to produce CH4 and H2O. As you can see, the methanation reaction, if, if you've actually written down all the reactions as we proceeded from the primary former up to the methanator, you can see that the methanation reaction is the exact inverse of the reforming reaction. It is exothermic and is thus accompanied by an increase in temperature. So downstream the methanator, the gas is chilled to a temperature low enough to allow for all the H2O produced during methanation to condense and separate. And sometimes even molecular sieve dryers are utilized to eliminate moisture from the gas stream. Now the process gas, mainly hydrogen and nitrogen with traces of methane and argon, is ready for ammonia synthesis. The gas is first compressed to the process required pressure then heated for the required temperature, heated up to the required temperature in an inlet effluent heat exchanger, where the gas outlet, the ammonia synthesis converter, heats up the gas inlet. In the ammonia synthesis converter, nitrogen reacts with hydrogen to produce ammonia, like we mentioned in the previous video. This is the core of the process. This is where actually our uh, ammonia or our product is produced in the ammonia synthesis react. This reaction is exothermic, and thus proceeds with an increase in temperature. 
The converted gas is then cooled in the inlet effluent heat exchanger, which was this, which is the same exchanger that was used for heating up the the feed inlet the ammonia synthesis reactor. So the gas outlet, the ammonia synthesis reactor, is cooled in that inlet effluent heat exchanger or the or the loop. They merged all these exchangers in one in one exchanger. So it the gas is then cooled in this exchanger and is further cooled or further chilled to negative 33 degrees Celsius in a refrigeration unit that utilizes ammonia liquid as a refrigerant. The ammonia outlet the converter is around 17 mole percent. So of course the reaction is, is not a 100% conversion reaction where there are unreacted hydrogen and nitrogen that are recycled back to the ammonia synthesis loop once ammonia is separated from the stream in the refrigeration unit. One important thing is that a purge gas stream must be withdrawn to avoid building up to avoid the building up of inerts in the synthesis loop. The produced ammonia liquid is simply sent to storage tanks at negative 33 degrees Celsius and atmospheric pressure. In the diagram that we used, you should have actually finished like mentioning the overview of the process. So in the diagram that we used, you should notice that the drawing is very is very simplified, where sometimes important equipment weren't included in and some exchangers were merged into one exchanger like like the one that I last mentioned about the inlet effluent exchanger to the ammonia synthesis reactor sometimes some exchangers were merged into one exchanger that resembles a, a certain a certain setting to simplify the diagram as much as possible so once again this is not a hundred percent accurate diagram it is intended to be used to give you an overview only an overview of the process so I would highly recommend that you don't stick to either the diagram or the temperature and pressure values mentioned on the streams. Whatever value I mentioned of temperatures, pressures, or compositions are all from my own industry experience. So these are practical values. I hope this video was of benefit to anyone who has watched it. We shall get into the details of the uh, of the uh, we, sh uh, we should get into the details of the process in future videos. So here is my email and please, please don't hesitate to contact me if you want to ask anything about the process or anything about chemical engineering in general. And uh, I'll see you soon.